Hello everyone and welcome to Respectful Dave. In today's video I'm going to play a game and I'm going to walk you through what I think. Your job as a viewer is to pause the video from time to time, compare what you think with what I think and then we can all learn. Okay, so we found the game. We're playing it Zedog. Uh, good luck. E4 was played and we're playing with the black pieces so we're going to play C6. The Karo. The so popular Karo clan. Very, very solid defense. I recommend it if you're a beginner. I recommend it even if you're not a beginner. And um, what, is, what this move c6 is doing is that it's preparing d5 to take back with the pawn. And the difference between something like c6, um, the difference between c6, sorry, and e6, which would be the French defense, is that in the French defense, this bishop suffers a little bit. So now I can take my bishop out like this, bishop g4. Not going to suffer that much because it's already outside. And after that, now I can play e6, e6 sorry, and now my center would be very well protected. It would be very solid. That's what we call solidity in chess. That being said, chess, you, you should always write your plans with, with pencil. And um, the execution of the plans are written with pen. Do you, do you see what I mean? So normally you're very flexible. You don't, you don't have to do something just because you, you chose it to, to do a couple of moves ago. So initially I wanted to play e6. But then after a while I thought, well, takes, takes, and knight f6 is another way of approaching it. Uh, if my opponent had played e5, then it would have been more likely to go f6, for instance. So, all these plans are very... Um, they're, they're, they're likely to change. Knight e5, very good move. Now this, this bishop is going to get hunted, unfortunately. And I say unfortunately because once I give my opponent the bishop pair, usually playing against the bishop pair is not very pleasant. So I'm going to suffer a little bit, but it's okay. I'm going to play bishop d6. Asking a question, so would you would you mind if if I take on e5? That's that's the question, and this is a forced move, right? So if if my opponent doesn't like h5, everything's getting forced all of a sudden. So you you do have to take a look when you're playing a game. You do have to check um, forcing moves, so checks, uh, capturing, and yeah, everything that forces you to do certain certain move. So h5, I, I'm looking at the forced move. Bishop takes e5, of course. I also took a look at queen a5, for instance, which is check, which is another forcing move. But after bishop d2, I rejected it instantly, because it's it's obviously bad. So now I'm taking this, and then after hg, I would be happy if my opponent took back, because then I take... Ah, no, never mind. I wouldn't be happy. Actually, this is complicated. If takes, takes, I not taking, but queen a5 seems to be pretty good. And against takes, hg, I can take with the queen. So I think bishop takes e5 would be a good move. And this is the way I evaluate and calculate in chess. Now I am risking because maybe I missed something. So it's never official until, until it's happened. So queen a5, my idea is that I get to check my king, the king. And I know that both my knight and my bishop are attacked. But my plan is that I take the pawn with check. Everything's check. That's very important. And now I get to play something like bishop e4, which is or bishop f5, which saves my bishop. And the point of the, this whole sequence is that I'm gonna play bishop e4. The point of this whole sequence is that now I am up a pawn. I'm also creating some sort of like um, tension here, but f3 I missed. I would have to take. Rook takes, maybe bishop takes, c2 works. Getting complicated very quickly. Which is what usually happens in these games. So h6, very good move by my opponent. Now I have to get worried about this and bishop f6. So I'm going to play knight d7. I'm going to lose my pawn back. But in exchange I am getting uh, activity, so I am developing my pieces. And I am getting ready to castle. So hg, of course I'm not going to castle this side anymore. That would be... Insane. So hg, rook g8. Bishop g2 is also something that white must be worried about. Okay, interesting. I'm going to take this pawn. Then I'm going to drop back to, all the way to g6. Because there's not, not a pawn on h5 anymore. So I wonder why my opponent... Maybe my opponent thought, thought that there was some sort of tactic like this. Which I disagree with so there, there's nothing such as just that 
And now I'm threatening GH. So HG must be the best or the most principled play way of playing, sorry. To which I'm gonna play rook g8. And I think I'm I'm doing well. I might take on g7 in the future. This pawn on g7 might look a little bit scary, but the truth is that all the pieces of white are far away from that pawn. So there's no one. The only piece that could protect that pawn is the bishop on c3. But it's far away. Okay. What's the idea? Ah, I see. So if I take rook takes d7. You have to constantly look at your, your opponent's resources. Yeah? I'm gonna play rook g8. If hg, I can't, I still can't play this. I will have to play something like knight d5. Attacking this bishop, so threatening to take it and then take g7. And if white plays something like rook d1, I can play either knight b6, I could, I could castle. I have many options. So I'm spoiled for, spoiled for choice. Actually, rook d1, I could take. Rook takes d7 is not possible because rook takes d1 check and then king takes g7. Rook takes g7, sorry. That would be good for me. And um, let's say rook d1, knight takes g3, b takes g3. I just play castles. Bishop d3. Hmm. Hmm. What if I take? Ah, okay. Yeah. What I, what I will do now is I'll take this. Bishop takes g6, I'm not worried because I take. And if bc... Hmm. I didn't think this would be annoying. In fact, I'm happy that I get king e7. Now I'm not going to castle anymore. Or maybe I should. Uh, difficult to evaluate. I think black is either good with king e7 or with castling. But yeah, so what my opponent wanted to try is rook h8, I'm suspecting. But it's it's not going to work because I, I either castle queenside or I play king e7. And it's not, um, it's not working for white. And what happens is that if nothing's working for white right now, that's bad news. It means white is already worse. So now rook d1 is coming. I have the question of whether I should play... King e7 or castle. So if I play king e7, rook d1 is there. Must be careful with that. So what I will do, I'm going to play king e7. If rook d1, I'm going to play rook d8. Should I play knight c5? I think I should play rook d8, but it's a little bit risky, I must admit. I'm going to play knight c5. After this, which I evaluated, I unfortunately have to... Maybe I have this very... This is a very materialistic move, by the way. Oh my goodness. Now I'll have to defend this horrible position. Yeah, I did not play this in the best way. But luckily for me, rooks, rook endgames, I should say, have very good chances of, very good drawing chances, sorry. So we're not down any pawns, and I think we can hold, hold things. In this endgame. I'm going to create this past pawn. I'm going to support it. I'm play king f5 maybe. And rook c7. Interesting. I'm going to take this. Why not? I'm going to play f3. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for it. Maybe this. I'm too... I'm too... Actually, king g4 might have been better, because now takes and rook e8 is pretty good. Okay, my opponent didn't. My opponent is panicking a little bit. Play a, let's play e3. Play e2. g3. f2. 
Don't ask me what's going on because I don't know. <laughs> King of two back. This is going to be a draw. It's going to be a crazy one. Yeah, but I thought this was winning now. Oh, no, I blundered. Or oh, maybe not. Maybe not yet. Oh, yes, I did. Oh! Is there anything? Oh! Oh! Wow, that was crazy. <laughs> I didn't play this before. Yeah, now this is winning. Yeah. That was... That was out of my control. <laughs> Just to show you, I guess, it's good to document why, how these games truly go. Um, so the point is that in this position, white can win with rook takes e5. And after f2, this is good visualizing exercises, rook e8. And I can't promote because, or I could, but it would be bad to rook f8. And I lose the queen, my new queen. The rook takes e5 is possible there, but my opponent missed it. Anyway, rook f1 is, is complicated, but I think it should be drawing. Um, it gets very complicated, as I said, because after king of two, then the only thing white has to do is put the rook on e1. And then I'm, I'm so I don't, I don't want to move my king. Sorry, put your rook on e1. I can't move my king anymore because if I move it, then rook takes e2 and then I'm probably losing that. Probably. Maybe I'm not losing that. Maybe it's a draw. But um, that's one safe way of approaching this, at least. And even rook e1, king g2, what am I threatening? I'm never threatening f2, because rook takes e2 would be pinning, and then king takes e2 also. So it's very difficult. Um, yeah, but I, my opponent was playing a little bit. So maybe a4 here, or a5. and My opponent can always waste a tempi, because they have the rook. But in this position, they go wrong, because after f2, I think I'm winning. I just have to find king f1. But I went king f3, which is a mistake. You know why? Because now... After check, which is the right move, king g2, just king takes e2. But they give it an another check, nervous. In king f1, I find the winning move, and e1 is now unstoppable. So, I win. Very, very, very crazy game. If you like this video, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and yeah, have a nice day.